someone's asking if we can tell who's the oldest chick by the fuzz on their heads and who loses it first. Uh, not necessarily. Uh, feather development is partially age and partially diet. So if you have uh, a more aggressive but younger bird who tends to get more of the food, they may actually um, develop quicker in terms of feathers. Um, we've got, sometimes you'll go to a nest at banding, you know the birds are within a couple days of each other, but one bird will look like it's about five, six weeks old, and the other looks like it's eight weeks old. So a lot of the development depends on how much food they're getting. Someone's asking how we can protect birds of prey from extinction. Um, probably the best, well, <laughs> there's a lot of ways. One is, especially for birds that are scavengers, is to stop the use of lead ammunition in hunting. So many bald eagles and golden eagles die from ingesting the lead that they get from uh, the gut piles left by hunters or uh, carcasses that weren't found after they were shot. Um, providing habitat for them to use, uh, providing areas where they can find prey. So don't pave over everything, leave, leave things wild. Um, and basically watch what we put into the environment. Uh, you know, DDT was a big problem. Uh, there's always the potential for some other poison to come down the pike and start being used before we know what its impacts are on the birds. When the chicks fledge, how long do the parents stay with them, um, and do the parents teach them to hunt? The chicks usually stick around the territory for about a month after they take their first flight, and uh, the adults do not teach them how to hunt. The chicks pick that up naturally over their first year or two. They're generally scavengers for the first year, so they travel around a lot looking for, for dead things on the beaches, along the roads. Um, falling ravens or turkey vultures to find dead things. Um, that's. Whoop, sorry about that. There was my camera. Um, that's probably why we have such high mortality during the first year. Usually, about 50% of the chicks don't survive through the first year, uh, and that's just because they don't learn to find the food on their own. Are bald eagles still endangered? No, they were removed from the endangered species and threatened species list, uh, I believe in 2007. What education do I need for my job? Um, I started this job with a master's degree. Um, for my research assistants, I look for at least a bachelor's degree in biology, um, largely because our permitting can be sort of um, hard to get and the state wants to make sure that we're having uh, good people working on the project. Uh, I do have a PhD in zoology which I actually finished after I started the job here. What can second graders do to help save bald eagles? Um, I would just be careful <laughs> what you do in your life um, the things that you dump into the environment, the trash, um, just, you know, be good to the environment and the, the eagles will do fine if, as long as we're not destroying their environment. How do we track banded eagles? And do we have any that are chick that were chicks and now adults and having their own chicks? Um, all the eagles that are on the islands were released here 
or hatched here. So either brought here when they were about eight weeks old or have hatched from nests. So we do have second and third generation eagles breeding out here that were once chicks here on the island. Um, mostly how we track the birds now is through the, the bird banding lab, which is uh, in charge of keeping track of all the birds that are banded in the U.S. So every time we band a bird, we have to send a report to the bird banding lab. They put it in their records. And then as other people see these birds elsewhere, they can also go online and report to the bird banding lab that they saw this particular bird at this particular place. And the bird banding lab will cross that with their records and then send both the reporter and the bander a report of where this bird was seen or, and or banded. Uh, for instance, uh, two days ago I was out doing peregrine falcon surveys on Catalina and I found a peregrine that had a leg band on it that I was able to read. Um, I reported it to the bird banding lab, but I also contacted the, the two other banders that I thought may have banded this bird because it was a, a one-year-old peregrine. And it turned out that it was banded down at Point Loma in San Diego last May. So, you know, we, we all work together, both professionals and um, hobbyists who go out and, and watch birds. And so we all work together to, to track these birds via their bands. Do the bald eagles prey on island foxes as the golden eagles do? Um, bald eagles don't tend to go for live mammalian prey. I'm not going to say they never kill a fox. Uh, we have seen a couple fox brought into the nest, but there's no way to tell if they were dead before or after the, the bald eagles found them. The golden eagles definitely kill the foxes. They they like to eat mammalian prey, and we've had nests with, you know, half a dozen foxes in it when we went in to try to trap the adults. Um, have we seen the eagle nest with juvenile and parents that are in the news up by Azusa and San Gabriel Dam? Um, I'm not aware of that one unless it's the Las Casitas birds. And if it's the Las Casitas one, um, the female is a bird that we banded here on Catalina Island. How far do the kids fly once they're on their own? And how do they end up with a mate from another family? Um, when we used to put GPS transmitters on the eagles, which would give us maybe 10 or to 14 points per day for a bird, um, we've had them fly from Southern California up to Central British Columbia, over to Alberta, Montana, so they can go thousands and thousands of miles. And generally, they'll come back to within about 200 miles of where they hatched for breeding. So eventually, as they age, get maybe four to five years old, they'll start um, looking for a mate and uh, select a territory. So they may find a, another unmated bird and set up a new territory. They may find a territory and um, kick out um, one of the birds there and take over. So there's a variety of ways that they can find a, a mate. Let's see. Some of my, give some of my background on my interest in eagles and raptors. Um, let's see. When I was doing my PhD, I was working on ground squirrels, um, but it was part of a larger project looking at the prey for um, birds in the Snake River Birds of Prey area. So that's probably where general interest started coming in. Um, while I was in grad school, I did volunteer at a raptor center for a couple years in Fort Collins, Colorado. Um, so that gave me more hands-on with actual raptors. Um, I actually did do some spotted owl work between my master's and my PhD. Um, and then this position here with the eagles was only supposed to be nine months with the possibility of extension, which obviously we've extended. 
and I consider myself really a wildlife biologist. I'm not really a raptor biologist because I'm interested in a variety of, of species. Um, but, you know, being on the islands here and getting the opportunities to work with different raptors has uh, been very enjoyable and informative. Um, so far, I've worked with bald eagles, um, osprey, peregrine falcons, and done some banding on American kestrels and sawwet owls out here. So um, it's just sort of, I guess, sort of lucked into the, the current position I'm in. So I was asking if interbreeding among eagle families in this kind of closed habitat caused any infertility problems. Not that we've seen. Um, our Fraser Point nest is actually a brother and sister um, nesting, and they've, except for this year when a golden eagle has been harassing them, um, they've had chicks for the last several years with no apparent genetic problems, uh, or at least no obvious physical problems. I guess we'll see once those chicks start breeding, um, whether there's an uh, inbreeding problem, but we have not seen uh, an inbreeding problem. I just don't know how much of a problem that is in, in birds. Let's see, how old are the eagle parents? Um, I'm assuming that's on the sauce's nest. Um, that's, I gotta look that up real quick. A40, the male hatched in 2005, so he's 11 this year. A48 was 2006, so she's 10. Do we see the banded fledged chicks often, like Nugget, Hulet, and Skye? Uh, no. Um, I don't tend to see them. We, I mean, these islands are huge. Catalina is 76 square miles or so. Santa Cruz is 100 square miles. Um, so these birds can be anywhere, either on the islands or on the mainland. We do get occasional sightings of them. Uh, often can't determine who they are because we see them at a distance. So we don't get a lot of sightings until they generally start breeding somewhere else or back on the islands.